Route redistribution. It sounds like a fancy process, and actually it is. Continuing with the OSPF video series about MyRotic devices running Router OS 7, in this video we'll go over what is Route redistribution, when are we going to implement this feature in Router OS. Welcome to the network trip. Before discussing what is exactly route redistribution, we need to understand the type of scenarios where we are going to need route redistribution. For example, if we are managing a pretty huge network, then we can have different sections in that network and every section can be running a completely independent routing protocol. For example, one section of the network can be running OSPF and then another section can be running BGP, RIP, OSPF. So in that case, we'll need route redistribution to inject route from one routing protocol to the other. For example, in this diagram in the screen now, we have this yellow box inside that topology. We are running OSPF. So all those routers in those interfaces that are facing the yellow box are running OSPF. They are exchanging routes, but those routes are the OSPF domain. So for example, if R5 is sending route, those will be exchanged and will be known by all the rest of devices inside that OSPF domain. Similarly, we have this pink box where we have some routers, we have some networks, but those are in a completely different routing domain. So by default, all the information from this domain is going to remain inside that domain. And all the routes inside this yellow box will remain inside that domain as well. So what happens if we need to inject those routes into the OSPF database? So in that case, we need route redistribution. Route redistribution is going to be configured in OSPF to inject route from the external routing domain. From the perspective of the OSPF domain, all the routes that are coming from that router domain are going to be external routes. And those are going to have a special type of link state advertisement or LSA. And that is the LSA number five that basically is advertising external routes. Another possible scenario is when we are merging networks. So for example, your company needs to merge the network with a new company. So in that case, probably the new company is using a different routing protocol, or probably it can be running OSPF. We'll have a device that is going to manage more than one routing protocol. And that device is that guy there. So in this case, R5. So R5 have some interfaces that are connected to OSPF. And there is one interface that is connected to a different routing domain. And that router has a special role and also has a special name. And that is the Autonomous System Border Router. In that device is where we need to configure route redistribution. Since this device is going to have two databases, one from OSPF and the other from the second routing protocol. And then we can tell the OSPF process that is running in that device that we are going to inject all those routes into that routing domain. All those routes will be exchanged inside the OSPF domain. And there are multiple sources for those external routes. So one source can be, for example, RIP, BGP, another instance of OSPF. There are two additional types of routes that also can be injected, can be redistributed inside OSPF. And those are the static routes. So if we manually went to IP routes and then we created a static route, by default, OSPF is not going to exchange that information. We need to explicitly tell the local OSPF process in that device that we want to redistribute that static route. Then also the connected routes. So we have networks that are connected in different interfaces, but we are not adding the interface template that is matching 
the network that is in that interface, that network is not going to be part of the OFPF advertisements. So we can also redistribute those, but in that case, those are going to be external routes. How is R5 going to exchange the information that is coming from an external source into the OFPF domain? It's going to generate a special type of message and that is called the link state advertisement type 5. It's going to be floated to all the areas except the stop areas. So we'll discuss stop areas in one of the upcoming videos here in the channel. The LSA 5 is the message that will contain all the information about the external networks. For example, if this routing domain has the networks A, B, C, D, there will be one message per network and it's going to contain the network address, the prefix R5 is going to generate the LSA's type 5. So it will travel in that direction. Eventually they will hit the ABR. That ABR additionally to the LSA 5 messages is going to send an LSA 4. In synthesis, that ABR is going to tell by using an LSA 4, the ASBR in our domain is this guy here. So it's going to contain information about R5. And now the backbone area will forward that information to the rest of the areas inside that OFPF routing domain. There are some special type of areas that won't receive the LSA 4s and 5s. I will talk about them in the upcoming video here in the channel. That video will be about the stop areas and the not so stoppy areas. But at this point, we'll understand that all the external routes will be floated from the backbone area to the rest of the areas if we are just using the default type of area. We know that OFPF is going to calculate the best path to reach a particular destination based on the cost. But uh, if we are injecting external routes into our OFPF domain, what is going to be the cost? There are two ways to calculate the cost for an external route. By default, the external route will be type 1. So type 1 means that the total cost to reach that external network is going to be the cost inside the OFPF domain plus the external cost. For example, if R1 is trying to go to that external network, the total cost, if we are using type 1, is going to be the cost in that interface plus the cost in that interface plus the external cost. For example, if the cost in iter 1 in R1 is 10, then the cost in iter 2 in R3 is 10, and the external cost is 1, for example, the total cost in that case is going to be 10 plus 10 plus 1. That is going to be equal to 21. But if we are using external routes type 2, basically this is going to use the external metric. Independently of the location of that OSPS router inside the OFPF domain, the cost will remain the same. If we are using the type 2, the cost from R1 to that external network is going to be one is not going to change inside the OFPF domain. The configuration process in my Roti router OS 7 is extremely simple. So we have this topology on the left, I have the OFPF routing domain. In this OFPF domain, there are three areas. We have the area 0, 1, and 2. So OFPF is running in that area. Additionally, there is a second routing domain where we have BGP. So, but that can be OFPF, can be BGP, can be RIP, basically any other routing protocol. The idea here is that we have two different routing domains. Let's check now R1. We'll check the routing table and we'll be able to see only the routes inside the OFPF domain. So if I jump to R1 and I go to IP routes, I can see all the OFPF networks. So basically I can reach any of the networks inside the OFPF domain. So that's cool, but the idea now is that we need to inject all these external routes 
into the OSPF domain. The ASBR is R5 since that device is connected to OSPF and also is connected to a different routing domain. So let's check how R5 looks at this point. So if I go to R5, then we have routing OSPF. And we can see that I have one neighbor. So in this case, the neighbor is this guy over here, R3. And OSPF is exchanging the routing information inside that yellow box. So if I go to IP routes, I'm going to see several OSPF routes. But additionally, I can see those with DAB. The B stands for BGP. So there is another routing protocol configured in this device. If I go to routing BGP, I have one session that is established with that IP address 10.5.200.2 that is basically R2000 on the right. Those devices are exchanging routing information inside BGP. We need to redistribute all the BGP routes into the OSPF domain. Before performing the configuration in R5, I'm going to capture all the packets that are going to R1. So R1 is one router in the backbone area. So I'm just going to capture all the packets by using Wireshark. I'm going to filter only the OSPF messages. We can see a lot of hello messages that are coming in and going out R1. So R5 needs to redistribute BGP into OSPF. So let's try that if I go here to routing and then OSPF instances and I open that instance, there is one option, redistribute. If I click there, I'm going to get a bunch of options here. So you can see that we have BGP, we have connected, static, RIP, OSPF, VPN, the ACP, and so on and so forth. In this case, we are going to tell OSPF, we need to take all the routes in BGP and please inject those into the OSPF database. This device is going to create the LSA5. That's the advertisement that is telling I got an external route and I'm sending those routes to the rest of the routers inside this domain. So if I click there on BGP and then I click OK, let's see what happened here in this router in the backbone. So in some seconds, you can see that it got a bunch of LSA updates. So I'm going to stop this capturing process. And if I go to LS update, open shortest path first, this is the OSPF header. If we check inside that message, we can see message type four. And then if we check the update, LSA type five. So this update has a LSA five inside. And then we are getting information about one of those networks. So you can see that it's getting the network 10.200.200.0. Then here we have the net mask and then we have the advertising router. This is R5. So this is one route. If I check the next update, also this is a type 5, but this has a different network 10.101 and so on and so forth. So we are getting all the networks. And here I must find a message that is the LSA4 that has information about the ASBR. Let's check that one. And you can see that I have that one here. The summary LSA ASBR4. And then we have the information about the ASBR. All those messages have been injected, have been floated inside the OSPF domain. Let's check how the routing table looks in R1 now. So if I go to R1, so now we can see all these routes that are coming from BGP. If I check the R5's routing table, IP, and then routes, we can see all those BGP routes. And now those BGP routes are inside our OFPF domain but they are external routes. And how do I know that? We have just seen the LSA messages, five and four, but additionally, we can check 
the database, if I go to routing or SPF, then LSA, so we can see all those networks. So all those networks type external. And if I click in any of those, then we can see that the type is one. So basically it's using the external type one to calculate the cost to reach that destination. And now we have injected some BGP routes into our OFPF domain. If for any special reason we don't want to use the external type one, and we wanna go with the external type two in all those external routes, then we need to use what is called a routing filter. Routing filters are a pretty neat topic that can be used to filter routes in OFPF, BGP, RIP, but additionally can be used to modify some properties such as the type in one external route. I hope this video has been helpful for you and I see you in the next one. Thank you.